All right, guys. Well, I think we should jump right into the biggest story of the day. Daryl Van Schauen over on Twitter. Leori Garcia, who has two years remaining on his contract with the White Sox, not on opening day roster, source confirms. Um, this is some news that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. Uh, Nick, I'll go ahead and let you start right off the bat. How are you feeling? I mean, it's it's interesting because I'm just a little surprised that they did it this way. I thought that it would be more likely that he started the season with the team. They give him, you know, a month or two. And if he's still playing as poorly as last year, then they bite the bullet and DFA him. But I will say it's refreshing that they are doing it now because it shows that they kind of understand that it's necessary because even if they started him on the roster, what are really the odds that he was going to be good enough where if someone like Romy Gonzalez was playing well in AAA, they wouldn't promote him and give him Garcia's reps. So overall, I'm I'm happy with it. I mean, of course, it, it's a little upsetting in the sense that Garcia's been on the team for like 10 years and by all accounts is a really good uh, teammate and hard worker, but at the same time, it's what's best for the roster, and that's what I like to see going forward. All right, Jordan, how are you feeling down there? I I don't think it's any secret. I really have never been Leary Garcia's biggest fan. Um, I've long held the belief that Leary Garcia hates me and does everything to spite me when he plays well. Um, it, it's because I've probably said, said something about bad him bad about him that day. Um, I'm not his biggest fan, and I think Nick's right. It, from the perspective of, you know, you never really t- relish in a player getting DFA'd, to be honest with you. I, I don't think it's it's fun to want to sit here and have fun with it, but also, it's a player who got DFA'd. Like, you shouldn't sit there and celebrate it, necessarily. Um, though, as a Carson Fulmer stan, anybody who sits here as Leary Garcia stan, I'm, I'm going to have some fun on Twitter in a little bit. Uh, honestly, though, at the end of the day, when it comes to the roster portion of it, it's symbolic more than anything else, right? It's the 26th man on the roster really shouldn't make that much of an impact. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't be having these conversations about Leary Garcia. We shouldn't be like begging as fans to have him off the roster. That, that's not what the 26th man should be doing. At the end of the day, it's symbolic more than anything else. Give somebody else a shot to earn that. Um, but, it shows the staff is willing to hold guys accountable for their performance. And that's what matters most at the end of the day. Yeah. And you know, that's certainly something we've talked about in past episodes. Um, I think that actually you wrapped it up really nice there at the end, Jordan. Um, It's something that kind of, it reflects on Pedro Grafal and how he sees his roster and how he wants to build the culture in the room. And, you know, even, even with, with Leori Garcia being obviously a, a, Great locker room guy, somebody who a lot of people like, his teammates all had nothing but great things ever say about him. You know, sometimes you have to really kind of rip that Band-Aid off to get that new sense of culture in the in the locker room. You know, you don't want to have a lot of carryover from the last uh, the last regiment, especially with how the last regiment kind of went down, you know. Um, you know, and then you look at, like, what Jose Brady said about everything, you know, on his way out. It's just good to get, like, a new culture going in the locker room. It, it has a new feel. This really feels like a, a fresh team. You know what I mean? Like, they went to the car wash. They got the new car smell. It's the same car, but it smells a little bit better. You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> and I think that's a really good point, though, on your part about, you know, the clubhouse leadership. Like, yes, clubhouse leadership is important, but we're talking about a guy who's been here since 2013, has kind of seen the waves of the team, but was also – chiefly part of the team you're not going to put 2022's failures on any one particular individual but if you're talking about a fresh leadership change in your clubhouse starting with the manager and working its way down it's not a bad thing to have different leaders different voices uh stand up in those situations um i i I think a new voice would be appreciated i I think from this perspective the only other thing i'll say on this there's two things i'm very curious about from here Number one, does Leary Garcia get picked up elsewhere? I don't think anyone's going to take on his current contract, but does he get a um, minor league sort of deal somewhere and, and kind of see what happens there? But also, two, kind of the same thing we were lighting Tony on fire for not too long ago, how long he was sticking with Garcia and how much he was putting him in the lineup. Hans Alberto is Pedro Grafal's guy. If Hans Alberto is not performing in May – you need to hold him to the same standards you held Yuri Garcia. Otherwise, you're just recreating the same situation with a new manager and a new utility guy. Like, if if he's not performing in May, we we can't have the same conversation of, 
when are they going to cut him than we've had with, Le- with Leary Garcia for a couple of months now. Um, that is more than where Leary Garcia goes. I'm sure he'll get another team somewhere. I'm curious to see that, you know, if things aren't going well with Alberto, when does he head out the door? Because that's going to be important for Pedro Grafal. It's not only, it's easy to get rid of the previous manager's favorite guy. It's harder to get rid of your favorite guy. Yeah, well, I think that's the name of the game, and that's why it was so hard for a guy like Tony Arusa or even like a Rick Renteria, Rick Renteria before that to get rid of a guy like Leori Garcia because he they they both really saw like the benefit he made in the locker room. But you know, I and I think I think a lot of people get upset at your worst player when your entire team is playing bad, and I think that's why Leori really got a lot of the flack that he did. Not that he didn't deserve a lot of it, but I think people got really hyper focused and like kind of acted like the sky was falling every time Leori Garcia like struck out or ground out. And it's like, well, we've got three ground outs from. Jose Abreu, Grandal has three strikeouts today, and Aloy still can't swing a bat. You know what I mean? So, like, there, there's, like, certain things last year where it's like, yeah, you you know, Leori's not playing well, but nobody is. Um, but I think a lot of that falls on the front office, not kind of really maybe stepping in and being like, okay, it's it's time for Leori to go. You know, like, the talent just isn't there. He does everything we ask him to do. And if you're, you're Leori Garcia and you have a three-year contract sitting on the table, are you really are you not going to sign that? Like, that's just insane. You know, of course you're going to sign that contract. You're going to take that money, and you're going to stay with uh, stay with what you're comfortable with. But I think I think Kenny Williams and uh, Rick Hahn, I think they deserve uh, a bit of the brunt of the blame for Leori Garcia making it this far. And I think a lot of hatred of Leori Garcia should be put a little bit more on their shoulders as well because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are in charge of the contracts and they're the ones who kept them under contract this long. Agreed. And I think it's good on them and the entirety of the front office for finally deciding that they're going to eat this. They're, they're, it's it's going to go its way and we're going to be done here. Um, Duke, I can finally stop mentioning Jeff Kepinger. And for the last time, I get to make my favorite joke. You know, there's only three guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and Leary Garcia roll over ground balls to second base. And, and you know, <laughs> listen, this is not goodbye. This is see you later. We all know <laughs> that Leary Garcia will be back in some sort of a minor league or front office role within the next five years. That's just the Jerry Reinsdorf way. Might even might even get a uh, might even get a statue out on the concourse. We don't know. We'll see how that all. <laughs> the works. game three the game, yep, the home run. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if this rebuild doesn't finish off the way it should, that might be the highlight. He might get a statue for that. <laughs> Man, chills. We got chills. <laughs> chills on my back just thinking about that Leori home run. What an electric factory. <laughs>